Hello and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. In this video, I want to show you what a one-sided limit is uh, as opposed to, say, a normal limit. So, usually when you study limits, uh, just in general, you're looking at the value that a function is approaching as x is approaching some sort of value. So, when you want run across these one-sided limits, I want you to know that they're almost the same thing. The only difference is that we'll be approaching that x value either from the left side or the right side. And so we have two different bits of notation to express that we're only going to be approaching that value from one side. Uh, in this first notation, you'll notice that there's a little minus sign next to the value that it's approaching. In fact, it almost looks like a power. That's your clue that x will be approaching the value of a, but we will do, we will be doing it from the left side. So this is a left-sided limit. Now in a similar fashion, if you put a little plus side next to the value it's approaching, then you are uh, approaching the values from the right side. Now to really describe to you what will be happening in these two situations, uh, we'll look at a graph and see if we can really look at the values of that function. So let's go ahead and check that out. So this red line represents a, a function, and you can see that it has many breaks and gaps in it. And the reason for all of these breaks and gaps uh, will become uh, apparent in just a bit. So suppose I'm taking the regular limit of this function as x approaches 4. Okay, So you're familiar that you would find 4 on the x-axis, and then look at what the function is doing as you approach 4 from both sides. Well, notice how if we approach it from the right side, the function wants to approach a value of 3. But if we approach it from the left side, the function wants to approach a value of 7. And if we're working with just our normal everyday limits, we would say that this limit does not exist. It doesn't exist because the, the left and the right are simply not agreeing. You, you get two different values. Now, if we only look at one of the sides, so now I'll, I'll be using that notation for the right-sided limit and the left-sided limit, uh, you can actually write down the number of what it's doing on each of these sides. So now, uh, still, we're looking at this 4. The plus sign will say, look at the value of the function as we approach from the right, and you'll see that we are approaching the value of 3. Now, it doesn't matter that there is a hole at 3. We are talking about limits, but the value of the function is approaching 3. If we do this from the left side, that's what our little minus sign says, then our function is approaching 7. Now, the only problem that uh, I find that people usually have with this is when you're approaching negative values. A lot of negative signs get thrown in there and it gets really confusing. So notice how in this next example, the negative five is the value we are approaching. But it's the little negative sign that looks like a power that tells us which side we are approaching. So this one says approach at negative five from the left side. So what is this function doing as we are approaching from the left? It looks like the function wants to be a 6. So that would be the left-sided limit. All right. Now, I, I used a lot of examples uh, on these places that have breaks or gaps, but potentially you could even use these one-side limits where there are no breaks or gaps. So one last one. Let's go ahead and take a look at the limit as x approaches 2 from the right side. Okay, so here's 2. I'm looking at approaching it from the right side. It looks like the function wants to be a 7. So as long as you keep track of which side you are approaching that x value, uh, you're in pretty good shape to treat these uh, almost like a normal uh, function, uh, almost like a normal limit. Uh, you may have noticed that there is a connection between our regular limits and these one-sided limits. Uh, a combination of the left and the right limit, if you get the same value for both of those, then you know that the regular limit exists, or you'd get the same value there. And maybe I can just uh, show you a quick example. So suppose I'm you know, going through and I'm, I'm looking at the value of the function. And say I'm trying to approach the value of 2 from the left. And I'm approaching the function of 2 from the right. As long as I get the same value from both my left and right uh, sided limits, say these both turn out to be 3, as long as those two things are the same, then I know the regular limit will also be the same. So it must approach 2, and the answer would be 3. 
And you could do this in the other direction. If the regular exhibit, uh, the regular limit exists, then you know the left and the right-handed sided limits will also be the same. So that in a nutshell is how those left-handed and right-handed limits work. Thank you for watching My Secret Math Tutor.